Okay, in this video, we're doing Calc BC problem set number 28. The problems in a playlist are in the description below. Let's take a look. Uh, number one, this is calculator. We are given that r is equal to sine of 3 theta uh, between 0 and pi. We want to find all possible values of theta for which x is equal to 1 third. This is actually a pre-calculus level question, but sometimes they ask this because uh, a lot of people don't learn much about polar, I guess, before Calc BC. So x is r cosine, y is r sine. In this case, we need x is equal to 1 third. So we're going to say x is r times cosine of theta. r in this case is sine of 3 theta. And at this point, you realize we're going to need a calculator. So we need three. We need sine of 3 theta cosine theta to equal 1 third. I'm going to switch over to the calculator, show you how I would solve this, come back and write down my answers. OK, so uh, for this part, what we want to do is we're finding all the theta for which x equals 1 third. So we're mixing polar and rectangular. One of the keys to being successful with polar, I think, is to realize that most of the time you're not going to deal with polar mode on your calculator. You're actually going to do everything basically in function mode. So I am going to go in and graph this thing. So I'm going to say graphs, press menu, option uh, 3, and then option 5 for polar. OK, so let's type it. It's the sine of 3. And then we need theta, which is actually in the pi key. Just hit that a couple times. We get theta. Uh, I only want to graph this between 0 and pi. So I'm going to change this. Pi is obviously in the pi key. Uh, I'm just going to press Enter. Just get a sense of what it looks like, right? Uh, let's zoom in. Menu 4, in. Uh, OK, so we have this. Now, I want to figure out when x is equal to 1 third. And if you look at it, it's like here and here, right? So I need to actually find those values. So what I'm going to do is convert from polar to uh, parametric, basically. But I'm going to do x equals r times cosine of theta. I'm going to do that on a graph page. So I'm adding another graph page. I'm going to leave it in function mode. And I'm going to do r, which is in var, r1 of now x is my variable. And then uh, cosine of theta, but again, x is our variable. I'm going to press Enter. I'm going to change my window, which I probably should have done first. So it was a good idea to do that. 0 to pi. Now, I want to know when this graph hits 1 third. So I'm going to press Tab and add in 1 third. There we go. Now I'm going to do menu 8, 1, 4 for intersections. I'm going to click one of the curves, click the other curve. And then uh, they're right on top of each other. You just arrow over it, control click, and drag. And so what we're getting is we're getting these two values. So uh, I'm going to store them. I don't really need to, but I'm going to do uh, store. That's control, menu, and then option 5. I'm going to store that as A, control, menu, option 5, store this as B. So 0.114 and 0.867 are going to be the theta values for which x is equal to 1 third. Just to make sure that's right, I'm going to go back over to this graph. And I'm going to do, so I'm going to trace menu, option 5, and then graph trace. And I think that I can just type in a, which I stored. Uh, and you can see that when uh, a is equal to uh, 0.114, it does to me look like we're at about 1 third, right? Like point. 3, 3 ish on, on this x axis. And then if I type in b, you can see it again looks like we're there. There's another thing you can do. I don't really think it's useful, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, in menu option 3, graph type, uh, we can go to, uh, you can do a relation or equation template for line and do a vertical line and just put it at 1 third. Um, and we can see this. Now if I graph trace, let's see what happens. I'm not actually sure if I need to like switch back. No, yeah, that's good. So if I do B, I can see them intersecting. If I do A, I can see them intersecting. Those are definitely our values. But we did almost all of it in function graphing. That's the key. OK, let's go back to the handwritten stuff. OK, and our answers were uh, approximately 0.114 and approximately 0.867. Let's take a look at uh, the next part. Write the equation of the line tangent to r equals f of theta at theta equals pi over 6 by hand. That's so unfortunate because it says calculator literally right above it. All right, so we're going to do the x equals r cosine, y equals r sine, and go from there. So x is um, r times cosine, so sine of 3 theta cosine of theta. We need to evaluate this at pi over 6. Uh, so 
pi over 6 times 3 is pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and then the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So we get 1 times root 3 over 2, which is just root 3 over 2, obviously. y is equal to r sine of theta, and r is sine of 3 theta. So we're going to sine of 3 theta, sine of theta. We need to evaluate that at pi over 6. Again, sine of pi over 2 is 1, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we get 1 times 1 half, which is just 1 half. All right, so to find the slope, what we need to do is use the fact that we have written these parametrically and dy dx is just dy d theta over dx d theta. We're gonna need dx d theta and dy d theta, great. So dx d theta, product rule, it's gonna be first, which is sine of three theta, derivative of the second, negative sine of theta, plus second, which is cosine of theta, derivative of the first, which is three cosine of three theta, we need to evaluate this at pi over six. Something kind of interesting happens because the cosine of pi over two is zero, which means this whole second part just drops out. So to evaluate this, we really just need to do the sine of pi over two, which is one, times the negative of the sine of pi over six, so negative one half is our final answer there. dy d theta, again, the product rule. So dy d theta, we're gonna have first, which is sine of three theta. Derivative of the second is cosine theta plus second, which is sine of theta. Derivative of the first is three cosine three theta. The same thing is gonna happen here though when we evaluate to pi over six, right? The second part, because the cosine of pi over two is zero, that drops out. So we just have to get um, sine of pi over two, which is one, and cosine of pi over six, which is root three over two. So we get root three over two as our answer for dy d theta. But of course we have to find dy dx. dy dx is dy d theta divided by dx d theta. Just parametrics at this point. dy d theta we found was root three over two. Make sure you don't accidentally flip these. I see that all the time. In fact, I do it occasionally. Uh, it's like whichever one you find first, you tend to put in the numerator. Don't, don't be that person. So root three over two divided by negative one half is negative root three. All right, and then we're gonna write the tangent line in point slope form. Y minus one half equals negative root three, quantity X minus root three over two. Let's take a look at the next part. All right, this is question number two. If dy dx is three T plus five over cosine of T and dy dt is four at T equals pi over three, we wanna find dx dt also at T equals pi over three. I don't know if I wrote the question the best way possible, but that's okay. Um, dy dx, at t equals pi over three, we're just gonna plug pi over three in um, and get uh, three times pi over three is pi plus five over the cosine of pi over three is one half. Um, and so that overall is just two pi plus 10. Um, from there, we're gonna say that dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. So this problem kind of like does itself, I guess. I mean, there's like not a lot to do, I guess. So. Uh, I don't know, sub in what you know, right? dy dx, we found is two pi plus 10, for whatever reason. And then we get four over dx dt and just solve this thing for dx dt. So dx dt is gonna be four divided by uh, two plus 10, no, two pi plus 10. It's really hard to read that in my head. Uh, divide everything you see by two. So dx dt is just gonna be two over pi plus five. That's our final answer. All right, let's take a look at uh, the next part. This is calculator. I want to find the distance traveled on the time interval from one to three by the particle with velocity vector. So you always got to keep track of like, in my given position, velocity, you're almost never given acceleration, but like maybe. Uh, in this case, we're given the velocity vector. We know that distance traveled is just arc length. So we are going to do uh, the integral from one to three, uh, arc length of this thing, well, actually, in this case, we're doing the magnitude of the speed vector. Uh, nope, we're doing the magnitude of the velocity vector. Listen to me struggle. All right, so distance traveled is the arc length of position. It is the integral of speed, and speed is the magnitude of velocity. We're doing the integral of the magnitude of velocity. That's what we're doing. So it's from 1 to 3, square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Make sure you get your parentheses right. I'm gonna switch over to the calculator, punch it in, and then come back and write the answer. Okay, we're just trying to find a uh, distance traveled uh, given a velocity vector. So this is something that we know how to do. Uh, I'm just gonna punch it right in. So I'm gonna do uh, shift plus 
and we are going from one to three, and then we need square root, so control and then the X squared button. Uh, I'm gonna type this one in directly. I'm not gonna like bother to store anything. It takes a little less time to do this. Only a little less, but still, it's less time. And you know, time is precious sometimes when you're doing these things. Uh, square root of t plus two. Oh my God. Just make sure you're always squaring the correct things. Um, so it looks like this, t, control enter. I get 15.985, there you go. I'm gonna go back to the handwritten stuff, see you there. All right, and we can see from the calculator, we got approximately 15.985. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Evaluate the integral of x squared plus three x minus two over x plus one. Uh, and I don't know, this looks kind of relatively simple as far as these things go. Uh, usually we have a quadratic in the denominator, and then we have to think like complete the square, u substitution, arctan, like what's going on, uh, partial fractions. In this case, it's just divide and integrate because this is not a proper fraction. I'm gonna use synthetic division. So negative one, because that's the zero of the denominator, and then the coefficients in the numerator are one, three, negative two. Uh, drop down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down. Got a good video on that if you're not sure how to do synthetic division. Uh, so that means that our original integral can be rewritten as the integral of x plus 2 and then minus 4 over x plus 1 dx. We just have to integrate this, which is pretty straightforward. So uh, you're going to get 1 half x squared plus 2x. And then this uh, is a straightforward thing, right? It's just going to be minus 4 natural log absolute value x plus 1 and then plus c. That's certainly one way to write the answer. Another option is to look at the um, x plus two as the quantity x plus two and write your answer as a uh, plus one times reciprocal. So one half the quantity x plus two squared and then still just minus four natural log absolute value of x plus one and then plus C. I'm gonna give you a third thing you could do, which I see people do and I always think is a little weird, but I mean, it works. Another option is to just let u equal x plus one. This is gonna work, but it's weird. Uh, that means that x is u minus 1, and dx is obviously du. And we can just do our substitutions, right? So this becomes, I think this is like algebraically a little more work. Every x is u minus 1, so we just get this. And then we can simplify that numerator. I'm just going to do it. We get u squared plus u uh, minus 4 over u. And then we can break that up into u plus 1 minus 4 over u du. And then if you integrate this, I'm just going to do it in terms of u, uh, we'll get uh, 1 half the quantity u plus 1 squared minus 4 natural log absolute value of u. If you then let u equal x minus, I'm uh, sorry, let u equal x plus 1, we're just back at this form of the answer. So it definitely works. So a lot of options on that one. Okay, that's the entire problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.